This is uh, Colnbrook Wood, Colnbrook Copse. And it's a bit of an aberration because it's uh, a couple hundred years ago it was called Coldbrook Copse, which means the stream that runs down there used to be called the Cold Brook. It's probably dry like the other one. But it's nice to discover these old, um, old names for, uh, for, for things that have been lost. In here, uh, in, a, in a quarry, was found uh, just opposite um, Cornbrook Copse, which was Cold Brook Copse. They found a beaker burial, um, beaker Bronze Age, between sort of 2400-500 BC to about 1000 700 BC, something like that. It was a cultural phenomenon that went on. It was important. And it is important to us um, to uh, talk about our heritage, uh, including um, the idea that they brought the, uh, the Welsh language uh, to Britain. The, um, but anyway, the, the earliest ancestor of the Welsh, the Welsh language. Before that, another language that wasn't Indo-European was spoken. So, what is, but nonetheless, the language of of, um, uh, of monuments in the landscape remained. Um, so the bronze, the Beaker people, um, put uh, venerated Avebury and Stonehenge just as much as the as the people that came before them. Even though they didn't speak the same language, they still felt um, it was important to them to. Um, to venerate the landscape and, or whatever it was they were doing in that way. Um, but yes, there was a beaker, which is a, a tall, um, well, if you remember um, plastic beakers from primary school, uh, a bit like that, but made out of clay with um, uh, lines marked around the outside, and a four legged bowl, um, which apparently had a certain red slip on it. Um, very very important find. Um, there was some disagreement in the environmental uh, heritage, the heritage environmental record, about exactly where it was found, uh, saying that in this location there was no quarry. Um, this is why I encourage you, uh, antiquarians and archaeologists, to come out into the field and have a look. I'm going to show you the quarry. Uh, it is there. If they came out, it might not be on the map, but if they come out and have a look, they'd, they'd see it. Uh, the location, it is on the brow of the hill, nearly the top of the hill, looking down over landscape, down down below, looking down on our stream. I'm not saying they found the stream important, uh, but it is looking down on it, uh, um, obliquely. And uh, so I thought I'd, I'd point this out. There is another uh, Bronze Age uh, cemetery further down, which we will get to after Attenville. Um, but uh, seeing these remnants in the landscape is really, really important. The, the barrow isn't there anymore, it's been quarried away. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd, I'd point it out. That, that is the Colne Brook, uh, originally Cold Brook, the Colne doesn't belong here, but the Col Colne is an, in in Colne is an interesting name and it appears in various other places. It comes from, most of the time, it comes from the word Coonaglan, which like Kennet has something to do with dogs, hounds, not dog as in something inferior, hound as in noble beast. And, uh, which is, because it's Celtic in origin, it doesn't exactly roll off the English tongue. Loads of people can't say Colne, 
they can't say Khan and that's because they aren't English so we're we're, uh, we're heading that's Totterdown house over there Hello darling, hello sweetheart. We've just passed Totterdown House and Totterdown. And Totterdown is uh, Old English Tottian, which means to peek, to look. And I thought it was a dead word, but I've noticed London, um, those tourist buses in London are called toot buses, and they've joined the two O's together uh, to make, the, make it look like a pair of spectacles. So I'm wondering whether it is as dead as I think it is, whether or not there's a vernacular um, usage but um, totter down means uh, and there's totter downs everywhere and it means the down dune which means hill and uh, we still use down for that in sand dunes and in like you know Berkshire Downs but uh, and the totter is totty and to the old English verb to, to peek. So basically it's a watch place. It's a place to keep an eye on who's going where. And we must be able to see all around the landscape. So uh, it's nice to see. Just thought I'd point it out. It's another interesting place name that says something about the geography and the past history of, of this area. The English uh, landscape really does look its best today. It is gorgeous. Best place in the world. This is Anvils, it's obviously a French name and it used to have an older name which is Godinga Flot and uh, so again we've got that Inga Flot thing going on. The, uh, it's uh, mentioned in the perambulation of Hungerford's um, Hungerford's uh, uh, boundaries it's uh, another indication of this mysterious stream. I'm wondering whether or not, because we are very close to that cold brook, that cold brook, whether or not that's the that's the stream we should be looking at. Godinga flood me, probably means could be. This is tentative. This I'll talk about Inga a bit later on, but it's probably the the good hill stream and. Uh, Good hill intermittent winter stream. It could be God's intermittent hill stream. Uh, the Ing might not be anything to do with a hill. The English Place Name Society thinks it is, so does Equal. But uh, Grundy, he doesn't talk about this here. He talks about Ing elsewhere in Berkshire. But uh, there may be another translation. Behind me is a Bronze Age Barrow Cemetery 
that's been ploughed out. You can't see anything today, but you can see from satellite the remains of the of the barrows and the and the enclosure. It uh, is context is on. This is on the end of a ridge, and the the valley goes down this way. The valley goes down this way, and then that other place where there was another Bronze Age barrow, which I showed you earlier on, less than a mile away is up there with those trees in the distance, less than a mile away. So you've got Bronze Age burials on either side of this valley. And in the middle is a and in the middle is our little cold brook.